So I wanna bring you kind of a miniature version of the third piece of this um, series that I came to you, third and final part of it. And the first one was called The Creator, What It Means to Be Created by Him. The second video was Image Bearer, How We Tarnish the Image and How He Restored It. And thirdly today, I wanna to quickly talk to you, and I don't wanna make this a long video because I want as many people to watch it as possible, talking about the create, creativity of Christ Jesus. I haven't really given it a title yet, but it's going to be about the creativeness of God, creativeness of Jesus while he was on earth, and then how we can be creative to reach more people and, and to give you some comfort and a little bit of guidance in how you should be and going about spreading the gospel and the good news of Christ Jesus that, that he died, that he was buried, and that he was resurrected on the third day to stand in the place of a bunch of sinners who don't deserve heaven, but as a result of their belief in the Almighty, Jesus Christ reincarnated God that came before us in flesh, that as a result of that belief that we can have salvation eternal and we can inherit the righteousness of Jesus Christ who fulfilled the law completely and died in our place. Like that is, I want you to be able to creatively go about your life and and and, and witness to people in a real way. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that today. Number one, how did Jesus do it? <clears throat> one, he was a good storyteller. Sure, that invited people in. Jesus was a great storyteller. He used parables. Sure, Jesus did miracles. Absolutely, that drew people in. But I want to point out two things about that, about Jesus and about that. Yeah, sure, he was a great storyteller. He wasn't the only person, I'm sure, to employ parables, and he wasn't the only good storyteller that ever existed. Also, we know from Scripture that there were other people. They weren't miracles in that they were using divine, they weren't using God divinely to do that, but we see witches in the Old Testament conjuring spirits. We see people that were around Moses creating snakes out of a rod, uh, like we see people doing magic from Satan, from the devil. And a lot of the times that's why, you know, Jesus would get hit from the Pharisees and saying, he's doing all this from the power of, of Satan. And, you know, Jesus answered and said, look, I'm, you know, Satan's not going to do this because I'm coming and preaching the kingdom of God. So he's not going to, a house divided, like it's just going to tumble. What in the world are you talking about? But the reason Jesus, the real reason that Jesus, the real creative reason that, that, that Jesus had for inviting people in and making them come to this, holy smokes, like being enamored by him was the life that he lived, being confused by him. Some of the best paintings, you know, the, the best art, the best images on earth, we stand before him and we just can't figure it out because we don't know... What's making this painting more unique than the other ones? People will sit there, they'll discuss what it is, and then finally they're confronted with the message of the painting, the message of the image, and it becomes truth to a group of people. And that's what happened in the life of Jesus. And this is what you saw in the creativity of Jesus. You saw him using his gifts perfectly and living a perfect and righteous life. You saw him using the gift of mercy because he showed grace when others wanted judgment. You saw him standing in the way of a woman to be stoned, saying, you who have, sin who have not sinned cast the first stone. He uses gifts of teaching and exhortation, and that he was bold for the truth. Like, he corrected those that he loved, okay? So if we got people around us, and, and they're living out an evil life, but pro professing to be Christians. What Jesus did is he confronted that, and he, he taught them about the kingdom of God, and he never sacrificed pleasing man for truth, and that's why he stood apart from other people. Number two is, you know, I mean, number three is he, he um, you know, he neglected the otherwise shunned. He used the gift of giving to feed the hungry without discrimination. He used the gift of wisdom when he remained patient with with those that were lost among him. He used the gifts of healing when he healed others who were sick, the gift of mercy and leadership, you know, when he decided that he would touch the untouchables and 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 speak to those not spoken to. He used the gift of faith when he put himself in dangerous places for the benefit of those that are lost and deemed sinners. He forgave his enemies. He showed mercy to the merciless. People who didn't deserve it got the best of Jesus. 
He used the gift of pastoring, knowledge, discernment when he remained patient with the mostly uneducated and unreligious apostles or disciples that he chose. He used the gift of evangelism when he gave the Sermon on the Mount and spoke to massive groups of men and women. And, you know, using the gift of helps, he healed on the Sabbath <clears throat> while he was and never stopped serving the least of these. You know, these were the things that made Jesus stand out in his life and drew people to him. This was how, this is how he was creative. His nature was the most creative thing about him. And so I, I want to give you one example. Imagine a street preacher in New York with a bullhorn. Imagine him being there for 30 years. I've seen them on YouTube. They go get interviewed. They say, how many conversions have you had in 30 years? They'll say none. Now, that's not to discount somebody that's preaching the gospel on a street corner because the gospel is much like a walnut. You can put it in your pocket and God will reveal the, the, the nourishing center of that to you 10 days later when you're in your car. Somebody will, will come and plant the seed. Another will water and it will grow. So I'm not bashing people that are doing that. But what I am saying is, is that you can be more creative in how you package up and deliver the gospel. Jesus did it by using his gifts, but he used them perfectly. We're not going to be able to use them perfectly, but we can be more creative in how we are packaging up and delivering the gospel. One thing we can do is not be hypocrites. Be aware of how you present yourself to the world. I got friends. I'll tell you right now. I'll say it publicly on here. I got friends. I got family. And they curse around me. Uh, they tell dirty jokes around me. They will partake in drunkenness. They will live much like the world. And then try to talk to me about God. And I'm just going to be honest. If you're that person right now, I have no problem in truth and in love saying that's not what God calls you to do. And what you're not going to do is you're not going to be able to creatively and most effectively spread the gospel of Christ whilst living that way in front of other people. It's called being a hypocrite. And what it is saying is that God's not powerful enough to change a man. It's not to say that you're not going to be without sin. But what it is going to say, what it is saying about your nature is that you, you have a product that's the gospel and you, you, you don't care enough about this gospel to be, be, be creative enough to package it up in an attractive way to disseminate it to others. You're not showing the power of Christ in you. Paul says, I would forsake all else. Count it as, he says, almost crap. He says, I count it as feces, everything else. Everything else for the sake of the gospel. He calls us to be radical, non-hypocritical, and, and to package it up tactfully when we're delivering it to people. And so Jesus did this with his gifts. The street preacher, no. Now think about the man who finds a woman in Walmart who might look like she's having a hard day. He goes up to her. He says, hey, are you okay? And, and maybe she opens up and says she's sick or has some heartache. And maybe he's able to help her financially. Maybe he's able to preach the gospel and give her a hug and tell her Jesus loves her and I'm an instrument of God filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you feel love right now from me, you're feeling it from God and he loves you very much. Like that is a tactful way to package up the gospel because that is the way Jesus lived. He gave mercy to the merciless. He showed patience to the impatient. He gave everything to people who had nothing. C.S. Lewis, he did this. C.S. Lewis, he is one of my favorite people of all time. He was a Christian writer. For those who don't know, he, he wrote the, um, he wrote and didn't produce, but the movies that, he, he wrote the books Narnia, the Narnia series. And that's all but the gospel. If you don't know about Narnia, go look it up, watch the movies. But it is the gospel packaged in science fiction. And a conservative Christian approached C.S. Lewis back in the 50s and they said, Hey, CS, you know, why are you, you know, dabbling in science fiction? What are you doing? And C.S. Lewis did, said this. He said that what I'm doing is we are, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing this so that I can get past people's watchful dragons. That'll make you scratch your head, won't it? I'm doing this to get past people's watchful dragons. 
What in the world does he mean by that? Watchful dragons. Well, people are always on the lookout. Dragons protect gold, right? People are always trying to protect themselves because most people care about themselves more than anything else. And so a watchful dragon is anyone that's looking to see if what they're letting in, they could be deceived by it. Could it be something in sheep's clothing? Is it real? You're constantly doing this. You have a dragon that's protecting you, the piece of gold. And so he said, I'm doing this. I'm writing these Narnia books to get past the watchful dragons. And so what he did is he used his gifts of storytelling. He wrote essays and fictional books to disseminate the gospel to people unaware. They didn't know when they picked up the gospel and they were reading about the lion and ass land that that was representing Christ Jesus until they realized it was representing Christ Jesus and they were reading non-inspired gospel messages in a fictional book. In the same way, you don't have to go and tell somebody that you're a Christian. You don't have to go and tell somebody and preach a gospel to them to go serve them and love on them and, 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 and write them a letter, be there for them in their time of weakness, give them a hug, be there for somebody financially and show them the love of Christ. You can package it up in, in, this, in this new body that Christ gives us and, and where people aren't even aware that it's Christ that's infiltrating their bodies and or infiltrating their lives, and they start loving you, but what happens is they're actually falling in love with Christ in you. You've packaged it up and delivered the gospel in such a way that men are unaware that they're being loved by Christ and that they're falling in love with Christ, and then you speak the gospel message. You have now delivered it in such a way as to bring more to Christ. And so that's what we're talking about. That's how Jesus was creative. So we are the delivery system. We are the, the means by which the, the, all the evidences of the power of Christ can fit within us. That's us. So in the same way, let me encourage, let me encourage you with a little bit of scripture, you know, and, and, and some a little bit of meat on the bones of this message is yes. It's about what we do and how creative and tactful we can be to bring the gospel message to people. I don't mind people bringing instruments in. I think it can bring more people in a church service. I don't mind I don't mind creative things that I don't mind creative things that church bodies and assemblies do in order to appeal to the masses, but what you can't do is sacrifice the gospel message which will eventually confront all those who you're loving on. And you're delivering the gospel too. And so what I do want to say, I want to share with you this. This 1 Corinthians 1.17 says this. I want to remind you of this. It says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I want you to key in on that. This is Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 1, 17. He said, not with wisdom and eloquence do I preach the gospel. Okay, so yes, you need to be tactful. You need to use your gifts. You need to be creative in the way that you present by living a non-hypocritical life in front, especially in front of those who are non-believers. But don't rely on yourself and your own eloquence and your own wisdom to, to think that that is going to somehow bring about someone's conversion because it's not. Let me be very frank with you. Go, go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. A lot of people have differing opinions on this. I know what I believe about this and maybe we'll cover it in another video, but I'll just let the scripture speak. It says, no one in John chapter 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. So God's in control of who comes to him. He's the one doing the drawing. He uses us as a vessel and a means by which to deliver that message. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are the delivery system. But he says, and I, I will draw him. Then I will raise him up on the last day. This is Jesus talking. It's written in the prophets and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father except he who is from God. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Okay? So do you hear that? God is the one that's responsible for drawing the man. You're responsible for being sold out for the gospel of Christ. If, you, if you're in a sales position and you have a product that you're selling, are you just going to say, hey, Jesus saved you? Come on. Is that going to get you your commission check? No. Are you not more sold out for the gospel of Christ than you are for the product that you're selling at work? And if so, why? What are the consequences if the person doesn't buy your product? Well, you don't make money. What's the consequences if you aren't the hands and feet of Christ Jesus and you're delivering the gospel tactfully and lovingly and non-hypocritically to the, the unaware uh, person that's outside of Christ? What's the consequences? They're eternal. So, so can, I, can I encourage you to, to be sold out for this and to be aware of how you are delivering this message creatively and that we need to look at the life of Jesus. We got to study it and we got to see what did you do? And I want to do what you did. I'll share this, I'll share this with you. There's no better person in scripture to get other than Jesus to tell us what this is. Key, on, key in on this. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. This is Paul speaking, and this is his message about creativity and how he is creative in his ministry. If you haven't heard a word, listen to this. For though I am free from all, I've made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. He's saying... I'm free from everybody, but, but because I'm so sold out for this gospel message, I made myself a servant to all. To the Jews, I became like a Jew. Okay, he's got Jews over here. He's like, all right, okay, so long as I don't sacrifice, you know, loving God, loving people, I'm going to be like the Jews over here. Why? In order to win more Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law that I might win those under the law. So under the law, people under the law, I'm going to be like them. If they think only eating chicken is fine, cool. I'm going to go to their house and I'm going to eat chicken. I'm not going to tell them why eating chicken is wrong. Because why? That's a minor point. I'm here to spread the gospel. And it's a major point. Number number two, in the, or number three in this verse, he said to those outside of the law, I became as one outside of the law that I might win those outside of the law. To, to someone who, who's not bound by the law in the Old Testament. He said, I'm going to go there, and if they're cool with eating everything, great. If they think something's not bad for them, I'm not going to correct them. I'm here for the gospel. I'm here for the big thing. He says in verse 22, to the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. So if you're among weak people, why are you going to come in? You're going to start bragging about your life, how good things are going? Or are you going to come in and be meek and meet that person where they're at and make it not about you but about them so that you can win the weak? So that you can befriend them, trust them. Have you ever seen anybody come to church on your invitation to a church service and, and, and they didn't trust you? No, but you have to become like them in order for them to trust you. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. Now, I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I might share with them in its blessings. Now, what's Paul saying? He saves people. No, but what he understood is that he was the delivery system, that the Spirit lives in him, and that through him the gifts of the Holy Spirit are going to be poured out to all those that he comes in contact with. And it's the Spirit of God. It's God himself that uses his words, the words of the Spirit flowing from a man, to draw that man to himself sovereignly and, and make him believe those who are ready to believe. That is it. And then what happens? Eternal salvation. That's the goal. That's it. He's saying to you today, be malleable. Don't be stuck in your ways. Be creative and tactful in your delivery and intentional when speaking to those, especially those outside of Christ. You are it, man. So two practical things that you need to know. You need to know this. You need to know your gifts. If you don't know your gifts, open up scripture. You know, if you're good at video games, I don't care. Do it to the glory of God. If you're good CEO, great. Do it to the glory of God. Like, do it and spread the gospel in the way that you live. Live the prayer that you pray. Like, that's what I need you to do. Pray the prayer. Go live it. Colossians 3, 23-24, whatever you do, do heartily as for the Lord and not men. Okay, do it unto the Lord. 
Open up the Bible and find where the gifts are. Administration, discernment, evangelism, exhortation. Go look it up. It's a Google search away. And then you got to do this. Number two is bring your creativity under the authority of God. Whatever it is you're good at, bring it under this. I'm good at public speaking. Bring it under the commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, and love people as you love yourself. Bring your public speaking gift under subjection of those commandments. If you're good at hospitality, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, and love people as you love yourself. Bring your gifts under the subjection of God. You can use your gifts for evil. There has been plenty a scoundrel in this world that would have been great preachers. But because they love themselves more than they love God, they use the gifts given to them by God to bring about evil, pain, and suffering. That's what happened. And so, that's my message today. Be creative. Be aware on how you come off to people whenever you're speaking to people. If you're claiming, if you're wearing the badge of Christianity and you're living a hypocritical life in front of people, what are you doing? Repent of your ways. Because if Jesus were there standing before you, I dare say you'd tell the joke. I dare say you would partake in drunkenness. I dare say you'd watch the pornography. I dare say that you would do anything that could publicly shame you if you were in the presence of Jesus. And let me remind you of this. My God is omniscient and omnipresent. He is everywhere at all times. So you're not getting away with anything, right? So the way you package it up, the way you live your life, the way you deliver the gospel to people matters. You got to be aware of it and you got to be in scripture to see the best ways to do it. And the best way, as far as I can see, because you can't do miracles and not everybody can speak in parables, what we can do is we can rely on the gifts given to us by Jesus Christ to bring love to others packaged up in this, in this weak body that we're given and be like Paul, that he became all things to all people so that he might save some. Are you more concerned about yourself and your product that you're selling at work than you are God's lost people who need him? Ask yourself that question. Let that truth confront you today. Be encouraged by it. Be scolded by it. Whatever you need it to be to you, let these words be it to you. I love you. I know this was kind of a heated message today, but dang it. Okay? We got to be creative. We got we got to we got to we got to love God. We got to love him enough to stop being so selfish and unaware of how we could impact what we're claiming has power. It's the gospel. I love y'all.